Round for the full video, guys. This right here is going to be another deep one. Let me tell you something, uneducated fool. Liberal tears taste absolutely amazing. Guys, John Claymore here. Now, guys, I'm pretty sure most of you know by now that the left is having an absolute meltdown. They're throwing all kinds of conniption fits. You've got white guys who claim that they are black, uh, deleting their Twitter accounts, only to then turn right back around and re-upload their Twitter account. Yeah, I'm going to be saving a special video for Talcum X, Mr. Uh, Martin Luther Crane, Mr. Snow J. Simpson. I'm trying to find something that's uh, much, much more original to describe this repugnant guy. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, Vanilla Blackberry. But then again, though, we'll talk about him much, much more in a later video today. Now, guys, this is absolutely hilarious to watch these liberals have an absolute meltdown, an absolute conniption over the fact that all their advantages are being taken away from them. Now, guys... In this video, what I'm going to be explaining to you is I'm going to be explaining to you why it is that liberals cannot survive without these actual inherent advantages. I'm also going to be giving you guys a bit of a compilation here early in the video of all the meltdowns and all the liberal tears that have been flowing, all the reactions, all the conniption fits. I'm going to be giving that there to you guys as well. But I'm also going to give kind of a bit of a past, of, I'll kind of give you guys a bit of a, a, a reflection on why it is that the system is the way that it is and why it is that conservatives have had to go to alternative platforms for years to actually get their message across and why it is that the biggest reason why the left is actually losing their minds over this is because they know that, uh, well, the advantages are gone if somebody actually purchases Twitter, someone from the private sector, an actual African-American, of course, an Elon Musk, and we've done a few videos on him here over the past few days. But there's also something else, too, that I need to be doing in this video, and that just sort of uh, kind of refute some of these points, which I will be doing after this little montage here. And in fact, on Twitter, it is predominantly straight white men so when elon musk says wow this is about free speech it seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men and so let them have it let them just go at it i enjoy the block button on twitter own all of twitter or facebook or what have you you don't have to explain yourself you don't even have to be transparent you could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else, and the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. At a time when authoritarians, insurrectionists, and rogue petrostates are weaponizing disinformation online in a way they've never done so before. Elon Musk says he is buying Twitter to save free speech online. And by, what he means by that is he wants to push back on efforts to moderate content on these who knows i, I think that's a, a that's a that's a, Many. a an example of a broader question for twitter which is always goes broad if you oh, yeah. uh if you get Except invited in to something no where broads. there are no rules where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody freedom do you actually want to go to that party or yes. are you going to decide to stay home and that's a question for twitter users some twitter users might love the idea that there's going to be absolutely no moderation and no rules at all Others might not want to be anywhere near that. Am I, am I crazy, Matt? No, no, you're right. And what, what happens <laughs> yes, to the are. advertising? I mean, if there's no moderation or little moderation, do the right. advertisers stay away? What does that do to the, yeah. the business prospects for taking over? So fuck you, Twitter, and goodbye forever, you insane Q-like forum. Or soon to be insane like Q-like forum. Peace out. Bye. Elon Musk, this is directly to you. Enjoy Twitter. I just deactivated mine. I will not be reactivating it. Enjoy. I deactivated my account and deleted the app. That's what I think of it. Fuck Elon Musk. Today, Twitter has announced that they've been bought by Elon Musk, or however you say his name. Um, I'm not interested in staying on Twitter anymore because of this. And I think there's a lot of people that are about to leave. So I just wanted to... Let everyone know that you can find me here. I'm going to also share this on Twitter before I deactivate my account so that anyone who wants to follow me can find me here as well. Hey, I did a thing today. I deactivated my Twitter account. You can too. Remember, people, these were here are the same people who banned Trump. These are the same people who not only did they ban Trump and ban other uh, right-leaning accounts like, say, the uh, Babylon Bee, these are also the same people who, by the way, allow the Ayatollah Khomeini to have an actual account. They allowed Louis Farrakhan to have an account. Yeah, I mean, the, the actual hypocrisy is, is, is hilarious, as you guys are going to see throughout the theme of this video when we get to the second half of this video, because um, 
these people are about to realize that uh, now that the rules have changed and now the playing field has been leveled, they're going to realize that they don't have a chance in hell going forward. So we're just going to ignore the fact that Twitter suppressed a story that involved Hunter Biden and his business dealings and his laptop. So we're also going to, and by the way, I, I thought that last one was actually pretty funny because uh, you're talking about uh, it's going to be predominantly white men on the platform. So I guess that, um, I don't know, you're, so it's, it's funny to me that you're going to concede the platform uh, because now more and more conservatives can talk about the fact that, uh, Oh, what is it? The black crime rates to the roof per ratio, by the way. Also, we can talk about black on black crime in some of the bigger cities, which, by the way, is out of control. By the way, a lot of these places are places that you guys live at, like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any other liberal shithole city in the country at this moment in time. By the way, not everybody who lives in these cities are bad. Just these bad actors that you see on like, The View and you see on these uh, MSNBC channels. Which, by the way, we will be bringing that back up here shortly because you're probably going to see the shift here soon in our actual media. But then there's also uh, another issue. You see, if you're conceding the platform, then that right there means that more and more conservatives will get on. By the way, this is funny because now all of a sudden conservative accounts are starting to gain more and more followers. You know, even libs of TikTok actually gain followers after Taylor Lorenz's doxing. I find that to be absolutely hilarious. It's almost like everything woke turns to shit and everything that the libs do tends to sort of like backfire on them. Another thing too that I really thought was hilarious to, to, to think about was, uh, you know, we're always talking about how it is that uh, fatherlessness in the black community is a very, very big problem. We always talk about how, and by the way, this is bad amongst white people too, uh, the, uh, the crimes that are committed by kids who are born out of wedlock because there's no strong male role model in the family. By the way, whites are the same problem as well. I just, I, just, I just find it funny that you're about to concede this right here to us. Also, not to mention the fact that Twitter employees, of course, the lady that was in charge at one time, she apparently was crying during the press conference. And of course, to me, it's just hilarious because liberal tears, they taste... So sweet, so so sweet. It's it's almost like a good sweet and salty snack to have to uh, to to uh, to kind of like it's it's almost like, it's almost like a before Coke went woke. It's almost refreshing, like an ice cold Coca Cola. You know, hearing these people cry, hearing these people whine. But you know, there's another point that has got to be made, which by the way is going to be the rest of this video. Okay, guys, I've got to respond to Brian Stelter. Okay, the biggest re and by the way, Brian Stelter is a great representation of what this theme of this video is. You see, Brian Stelter is upset about the fact that uh, apparently there's not going to be any rules. I'm pretty sure there's still going to be some rules put in place on Twitter, even when Musk in charge. But the thing is this right here, you see the left can't win unless they've got a bunch of advantages. I'll give you a great example of this. Now, this right may be an extreme example, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Do you guys remember Antifa? Okay. Remember, okay. Remember Antifa. Okay. Remember BLM. Okay. If they had done the riots and if they had done what they were doing, the destruction of property, attacking old people, the elderly, people who were just trying to mind their own business in these cities, if they'd have done this in cities that, quite frankly, had did not have strict gun control laws, uh, do you think they would be doing this? I highly doubt that they would be, okay? Go back to that night at the 2016 DNC when Jink Younger uh, was getting, uh, basically just getting picked on by Alex Jones and Jink decided to bow up. Of course, he would later on go on Patrick Beverly's, uh, pa Patrick Bet Davis' uh, podcast and say the right is nothing. But of course, Jink had Jimmy Dore. He had two or three other people behind him to protect him just in case he, just in case things got out of hand between him and Alex. If you guys are kind of picking up what I'm saying. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that they, uh, they bluster. They're blowhards. They do everything they have. They do everything they do with an actual inherent advantage given to them. They have the institutions on their side. They have the media on their side. And when you take that, they're away from them. They're actually quite weak, as you guys are seeing now. You see, the left does this crap without being held accountable itself. You see, you can't have absolute freedom without some form of accountability. This is one of the main reasons why I'm not a libertarian, which, of course, libertarians are going much, much more left. But here's the thing. You can't have this inherent freedom without some form of accountability. And, of course, the left has been kind of uh, getting away with the fact that uh, they can do whatever the hell they want without actually being put in their place, actually being checked. You see, if there were certain checks in place to check their power, they would not actually function so well in society with actual equals. You see, they're elitist. They believe that they are above you. They know that they can hit you. They know that they can hit you when you're down, and they know they can get away with it because they've got the media on their side. They've got social media. And they've also got social media on their side, and they've got the institutions themselves. Now, take away that advantage or give the other said person the ability to arm themselves or change the rules to where we're on much more equal footing, 
and you will see that the left will not survive as a result of this. Now, guys, with that there being said, this is a great opportunity for me to segue into the reason why the left has all the advantages, to, uh, as all the advantages that you see today. Now that you guys have seen the actual meltdown, let's go ahead and take a, a look back on why things are the way they are. You see, back in the 1960s, and I kind of think I, I think I might, I don't know if I touched on this or not, because of course I did not script this video, because oftentimes I go off script. I know I need to change that, but here's the deal. Uh, ever since the 50s and the 60s with the advent of, of, of television, okay, it used to be that the newspapers, you had a right-leaning outlet, you had a much more left-leaning outlet. It's always been that way. All you got to do is go back to the Wild West days, which, by the way, this is what liberals think this very is. They think this is actually the, uh, the Wild West because uh, there's not going to be any actual rules put in place, the rules that quite frankly protect them and then allow them to play victim later on. The thing is this right here. Um, even in those days, you had outlets who printed certain types of propaganda. I'll use the, um, I'll use uh, Tombstone for example. I'll use the gunfight, the OK Corral. The Democrats were actually favoring the Cowboys in the story, and Republicans were favoring the Earps. I mean, all you got to do is go back and actually look at the actual print uh, pr print works at that time, and look at the actual political environment there. I mean, like I said, I understand that's like the 1870s, 1880s. But it still holds true today. When the advent of television came around, you had someone like, say, Cronkite come around. Of course, you had other uh, other commentators like, say, um, Tom Brokaw. Eventually, this was in the 1990s. Who else? You had Ted Koppel. You had many, many more left-leaning personalities. Dan Rather, especially, giving you your news. It wasn't until the 90s when Fox News came around, which was Roger Ailes' original group. By the way. Fox News and Fox itself are not the same company, okay? They're actually two separate entities. But the deal is this right here. Before Fox News came around, conservatives took, uh, took advantage of this little thing called talk radio. You see, what people often at times forget is that conservatives actually outnumber liberals in the actual honest-to-God workforce. I'm talking about the working-class workforce itself. There are more conservatives who are actually doing more working-class jobs. Of course, you got to drive these jobs. You would listen to you cut on the radio. You didn't like the music that you were hearing. You didn't like the morning show. So a lot of times you'd cut on uh, AM radio, which, by the way, was, for the most part, inherently conservative. This right here, of course, took off when Rush Limbaugh was around. And, of course, as a result of this, conservatives had to get their message out that way. They had to find alternative ways to get their message out. So conservatives have always had to find ways of actually getting their actual message out alternative means. It wasn't until Roger Ailes came around with Fox News that conservatives actually began to take back a big portion of the media itself. And by the way, this very frightens the hell out of, this very frightens the absolute hell out of the, out of the lives in the media, especially CNN. By the way, CNN Plus uh, completely bombed their shutting down in a couple of weeks. I almost uh, brought that up in, in his video earlier, but I figured I would not do this. By the way, that's another reason why Brian Stelter is flipping out, because he realizes that him and Chris Wallace may be out of a job real soon. And this is also something else too to mention as well. The new people who are taking over CNN is actually John Malone. These very people are connected to liberal me to, uh, to Liberty Media. These people are not liberals. These people are actually a little bit more centrist and a little bit more right-leaning. So could you imagine for two seconds that uh, CNN is taken over by a guy named John Malone, taken over by a much, much more uh, right-leaning outlet? You already have Fox News out there. This right here only leaves MSNBC for libs. And what if Elon Musk, who, by the way, is not a right winger, he's more of a centrist, he's just a pro-free speech guy. What if, uh, <laughs> what if Elon Musk takes over Twitter? Okay, Twitter is the largest platform. Of course, Truth Social actually came out at number one the other day, which, of course, has not actually grown. But what if you've got Parler, Twitter, Truth Social, Fox News, and a right-leaning CNN? This right here completely terrifies the liberals and this right here is the reason why you are seeing such uh, hilarious meltdowns. Guys, John Claymore here. There will be another video out today uh, talking about uh, Sean King and the race grifting and why it is that liberals like himself are absolutely hilarious. And we'll be, extended, we'll be touching on this topic a little bit more in that video as well. And of course, there'll be a video on a short time of prepping my part two to my, uh, my follow up to the previous video I made about the military and why it is that there's an end game of actually dividing the military itself. That video right there will be out this afternoon, as well as this video, and of course the Sean King video, which by the way will be out later on, probably right around 5 o'clock. My videos will come out between 3, 4, and 5, all three of them today. Uh, I just figured I'd go ahead and make this video and go ahead and get this right out here. Of course, I'm making this video early in the morning. If you guys like the content, hit the like button, subscribe. Also, leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later. Tag, Herr Jones. And mein Herr, back. Tickets, please.
Take it. Oh, 